Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be talking about how to paint realistic hair. Now, today's painting was a commission that someone wanted me to do of their pet that had sadly passed away. It was a long-haired Dutch hound, and they wanted me to do a painting of it. So, as I was doing this painting, I thought, started thinking about a question and a request for a video that a subscriber of mine had requested, and I thought I would combine the two. So in the process of me showing you how I did this painting, I'm also going to be going over some tips and tricks of how to paint realistic hair, because that is something that I've personally struggled with, and I will show you some of the things that I learned actually while I was doing this painting. So without further ado, here we go. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get yourself a canvas. Now this was a 12 by 24 inch canvas, and I actually tried to do a greenish, grassy, blurry bush scene behind him, and it really didn't work. So I just ended up painting it white again and then starting over. This is, as you can see, I already have my pencil sketch on there, and what I'm doing right now is what you call block in, and where I'm just taking a rough idea of what color I'm gonna have on the individual sections of the dog right here and I'm just blocking it in. This is something to just give me a base in order to start my detail process on top of. So this is very simple process, very fast. All right, now this particular painting, I wanted to try a technique that I've never done before. I don't really know if it's a technique, more, more than a, what we would call a different process because I wanted to start with the eye that you see me working on right here and detail from the eye out. So detail and finish the eye and then work my way out from there. It ended up kind of looking a little strange at first, but as the painting progressed, I kind of spread out and started working on the whole thing at once, which is what I normally do. Now, one of the main things I learned as I was doing this painting was how the different paints that I was using worked with themselves. One of the paints that I used was a very transparent paint. So when you put it on top of the other paints that I was using, it darkened them up. So if you put it, if you put the paint over white, it would make it look more of the yellowy color. And so as I was working with this painting, I started using my, um, my colors and my paints to the benefit of myself, which is something I would recommend doing. And also, creating texture is a thing that is done over a period of time. It's very difficult to just sit there and paint um, texture on really quickly. So what I ended up doing was going over one period of, or one spot of the painting multiple times with different colors. And most of this is where I'm actually learning how the different paints work with each other. But I ended up realizing that there really isn't any simple way to do each individual, each individual strand of hair. Because in a picture, in real life, each individual hair is going to be reacting as if it's a standalone hair. I mean, that's, that's of course exactly what it is. So if you want to have a very detailed painting, you have to act like you're trying to recreate each individual hair. So what I used was a very thin, very small round brush. Some people call it a filament brush. Some people call it a zero. I just call it a, it, it's a detail brush. Very, very tiny little brush. And I'm basically painting each individual hair on there. So as you can see, I kind of have um, the, the, the colors all, all over the place. And this is because I really didn't know how the paints worked at this particular time. Um, but something I realized later on in the painting was if I painted over a section that I wanted the hairs to be standing out in a different color, I would paint paint them like with a white color. As you can see right here, I'm painting over a darker surface with a very light color. And then I would come back over it with that slightly transparent brown and it would even everything out and it would make it look really natural. And that's one of the things that I learned as I was doing this painting was using the transparent versus opaque paint to your advantage. Because I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you guys, if you guys know this, but a transparent paint is of course transparent and it will be affected greatly by the color underneath. But an opaque paint is very um, opaque. I mean, 
this is not a very good description of the of the colors um, but it will not be affected as much by the color underneath it so if you have a very transparent paint you can use it to your advantage now the the nose that I just did was basically just black and white and it's just playing with your tones and your your saturations and colors to be able to get that 3d look and um, pure titanium white is going to give you the most sparkle which is what the what I did to make it look wet um, and then I just kind of mixed the black in to, to give me the different highlights and, and, and mid-tones so as I progressed and moved down the painting the um, the, the, the main thing that I took away from the painting was was just staying at it. You can't, especially if you're learning, if you're a new painter, if you're learning how to do this stuff, you can't, it's not going to come to you naturally. And there's going to be many times where you're very frustrated and it's, and you want to give up. And I, there was many times in this painting where I was like, this doesn't look good. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And the only thing that fixed it was pushing through. And once I got past that kind of ugly stage, as it were, it was much easier for me to see what I was doing and see what I was doing wrong in order to fix it. All right, so the paints that I'm using are a raw umber, a yellow ochre, a warm gray, and a burnt umber. Now the burnt umber was the slightly transparent paint. It was made by Basic. Most of the paints that I use are Master's Touch, but this particular paint was by Basic, and that one was the one that was more transparent. And then of course I'm using titanium white and then permanent black. All right, so as I started on the ears, I went all the way black with the ears first. And then what I did is I added just a slight bit of white and brought the color spectrum up just a little bit. And then I started adding the individual little hairs to give that light glistening off of some of the shinier hairs in the black. And then the brown hair on the outside, because this particular dog that I was painting had a lot of black on the inside and more brown on the outside. The brown gave me a lot of trouble. And like I said before, what I what I learned to do was to paint the almost use titanium white to paint the highlights and then use the darker colors to paint like the, the shadows in there and then come back over it with that slightly transparent burnt umber and it brought them down and it mixed with the white and the brown and it gave me the exact color that I needed but like I said if you want to have very real looking hair, if you want it to look very realistic, it just takes time. You have to continue working at it and adding those individual hairs in there and the time that you spend on it will pay off. As I moved lower, the dog's feet I had already sketched out so this was actually uh, relatively easy for me to do and it was just a series of using the different colors that I had um, for the highlights and the midtones. One of the one of the more difficult things to do when you are selecting a subject matter is if you are taking a very large image and you are painting it on a very small canvas that's very difficult but if you're painting a very small subject on a very large canvas that's much easier because it enlarges, enlarges everything and it makes it easier to paint but then again this is this particular painting that I'm working on is kind of in the middle so it it afforded me a kind of a me middle of the road difficulty um, but it, it all depends on what kind of subject matter you're using so the one thing that I can stress at this point is keep messing with it if that makes any sense if if something feels off to you look at your reference photo adjust things keep adding and subtracting your sh your shadows and your highlights which is mainly what i did throughout this painting so many times is where i'm painting and i'm like this the flow of the hair as it comes off doesn't feel natural and i keep looking at my reference photo going what what do i need to change and sometimes in your reference photo something can look weird because I don't know what it is about a picture versus a painting but I've seen so many times where a picture something in a picture that's real in real life doesn't look natural on a painting I don't know what it is but it's it 
it's it's a phenomenon that I haven't figured out. Maybe if you guys know the uh, answer to that question, you can comment it below. But learning how to adjust things and change them in your painting so that look natural within your painting is something that it just takes time. Being familiar with your brush, with your paints, with your canvas is something that doesn't come easily and it does not come quickly. Something my dad used to tell me all the time is if you were good at something immediately, it wouldn't be fair to the people that spent their whole lives doing it. And also, nothing worth having comes easily. So if you want a skill like painting and if you want to be very, very good, it's going to take time and it's going to take a lot of effort, but it'll be worth it in the end. At this point, as I'm doing this painting, I've been painting for almost three and a half years, and I still don't consider myself to be a very uh, accomplished painter. I, I consider a painting of mine to be at least adequate when I look at it and I wonder whether or not I did it or not. Because, like I've said before, doing these sorts of paintings, you kind of get lost in a, in, a, in a painting. And what I mean by that is you may feel like you're not doing a very good job and you may feel like you're stuck, but if you keep pushing and you keep focusing on the areas that you're that you're frustrated with and you fix them one by one once you take a step back and you look at it as a complete piece you're like wow that looks a lot better than what i thought so getting discouraged is probably the an artist's worst nightmare um but there's a pretty good fix for it and that's just to to keep pushing and keep um working over those spots that are that are annoying to you So when I was doing this painting, I really didn't want the lower half of the painting to be distracting from the face. So my cousin, who is a who went to college for art, as far as I know, I think I've got that correct, she has been kind of showing me and teaching me a little bit about how an artist can focus and train the viewer of a painting to look at a certain part of the painting first. I mean, a perfect example is if you have a painting that's just a bunch of black and white squares, and then there's one red square down off in the left-hand corner. Every single person that looks at that painting is gonna look at the red square first. So, and there's a huge science behind it. I don't really know much about the science, but one of the techniques that I've found that can slightly achieve the same result is if one part of the painting is like super focused and the rest of it's blurred but i didn't really want the feet to be blurred in this painting and i didn't really want the um the back or anything to be out of focus but i really wanted the focal point of the painting to be the dog's face so that's the part that i put the most detail in and that's the one that i spent the most time on so these feet are not as detailed as I could go with them, but the reason I didn't go super detailed with them was because I didn't really want them to be distracting. I don't really know if I achieved that or not. I'm not really sure. You'll have to tell me when you see the original painting. Um, I mean, I mean the finished product, but I, I didn't really put as much time and detail into the lower part of the painting for that specific reason because I wanted it to look and I wanted you to look at the dog's eyes and the face first. I wanted that to be the focal point. Alright guys, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment and like this video and also subscribe. I'm trying to boost my subscriber count because that's literally the goal of every YouTuber. Um, but uh, I'm also trying to do that, so if you could help me out with that, please hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. Also, if you want a painting done by me of your special pet, leave me a message on any of my social media accounts. Chris Kempter on Instagram, Kempter Canvas on Instagram. 
Facebook at Chris Kempter, and I have just joined a new social media app called Minds. At least, I think it's new. It's new to me. Anyway, if you want to follow me there, that's a pretty cool new site, so hit it up. All of them are linked below if you just want to click a button and send it over to me. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and as always, peace out.